All right, let's get company specific. Ricky Pharmaceutical shares surging in yesterday's trade on the back of a positive trial update showing its new antibiotic drug showing a visible reduction in burn wound infections in less than 24 hours. Let's get some more on this. We're pleased to welcome company chief executive James Graham from Recce. James, very good to talk to you this morning. Thanks for joining us. So uh, tell us then a little more about this broad spectrum antibiotic that you've come up with. Yeah, good morning and good to be with you. Uh, we've been testing this first new class of antibiotic in over 30 years at West Australian's leading teaching hospital, a Fiona Stanley Hospital, led by Professor Fiona Wood. And we're actually seeing real breakthrough moments across a wide patient population uh, from gram-positive bacteria, gram-negative bacteria, and their hypermutated drug-resistant forms. So it's really class-leading stuff or, or internationally significant stuff when we start to look to our larger patient populations that this Burns Wound study represents. Yeah, because we're seeing, obviously, in modern society, uh, more drug-resistant bacteria. So you're looking to try and overcome that. Um, what is it about Burns patients where it's... Uh, why are you actually concentrating on that particular problem? Look, the, the Burns patient population is a vulnerable population. And I say that because, of course, where you have a, a break in the skin, particularly a hypersensitive break such as a burn wound, you have an area where bacteria can get in. And as soon as it's in your bloodstream, multiply often beyond control, which leads to sepsis, the number one most expensive condition treated in health. So in these patients, in the first 24 hours, where the clinicians are reporting visible reductions across all patient cohorts, and in fact, in acute patient settings or the smaller of, of uh, burn wounds, we're seeing a complete patient response or a total cure for those patients within five days. So the faster you get a, a, a positive patient outcome, the quicker out of hospital and the less likelihood to lead to uh, comorbidities or, or worse infections. So James, can you give us a timeline just as far as uh, those more sort of human clinical trials that you're doing, at what point then do you reach a position where you can get some regulatory approval? The uh, beauty about the burn wound study itself is really looking at the upside opportunity, that efficacy or, or performance of the compound, which all existing antibiotics are really struggling to tackle these multi-drug resistant infections. Uh, you get these clinical insights now, as we're seeing, and are on track to deliver our uh, end line results over the next uh, couple of months. But in parallel, we also have our intravascular study working on sepsis with patients being dosed during this present month of December at Royal Adelaide's Hospital in intravascular administration. So we've got two clinical candidates working side by side. You've got the shorter time to approval, say maybe two years for the uh, topical burn spray on antibiotic technology with the longer, more traditional intravascular focused technology working in the background in parallel. So a, an exciting time to be in infectious diseases and we certainly look forward to our portfolio expanding with such. Yeah, so you've got an impressive pipeline there of these uh, anti-infectives. How's your funding at this point? Funding's excellent. Look, we've got around uh, 16 million cash at bank. We expect uh, around another few million uh, from the R&D rebate. That West Australian study we referred to, the burn wound study, that's actually paid for the by the West Australian government. So it doesn't cost us a cent or it costs a few cents sending the product over. It's not, not expensive stuff. Uh, and then, of course, the intravascular study, a couple of million dollars. So we really look to that uh, capital as a tool, a tool to bring on additional uh, products as we bring our preclinical assets to clinical assets to tackle the infectious disease crisis as a whole. And in anticipating, obviously, that to scale up once you get approval, um, are you going to be manufacturing onshore or off? We actually manufacture out of uh, Sydney's Macquarie Park, or as uh, those in the industry refer to it as Peel Hill. Uh, we produce to uh, phase one, phase two uh, quality and volume specification, that being GMP quality. So we're really well placed to service all of our clinical trials and being a synthetic process as opposed to a... Uh, a, a traditional cultivation process, which other drugs are. We get very, very high yields, very good uh, scale of economy, and I really don't see us in any uh, capital risk situation over the, over the near term as we service our clinical candidates coming forwards.